Is computer science difficult? Now, this is probably one of the biggest questions that I get every single day on my TikTok and Instagram. Should I major in computer science? How hard is it? What can I expect? And now there's no one clear cut blanket response to all of this because as part of my degree, I definitely took courses that nearly destroyed me as well as some courses that were pretty easy and that I would take any day. The best thing that I can do for you guys is to give you a complete breakdown of every single course that I took as part of my computer science degree at Georgia Tech. And after watching this, hopefully you guys can decide for yourselves. But if you do have any questions, leave a comment below. My first semester of college was fall of 2019. I took five classes. The first class that I took was discrete mathematics and man was this a hard class for me. This class was my oh shoot you're actually a college student class. You see before discrete every single class that I took beforehand whether it was AP or dual enrollment I always got an A's but in this class the first exam was actually pretty easy. I was like I got a 99% on it. I was like oh you know what I'm chilling but then the second exam I didn't really study that well because I thought it was easy. I got a 60 and from this class I have major PTSD from any proofs or like combinatorics related math work any of those written stuff I just hate. The next class that I took was intro to object oriented programming and this class was actually pretty easy because it was 80% everything I learned from AP computer science and then 20% of actually useful topics. Funny enough I actually tried to test out of this class before the semester started but thank god I failed that exam really really bad because from this class I've learned so so much. This is probably like the second most important computer science class after data structures and algorithms. I've passed so many software engineering interviews just from this, just from knowing the object-oriented programming principles. The third class that I had was probability and statistics. Now this was probably one of the easiest classes that I took at Georgia Tech because my grade was based off of 20 online quizzes in that if I passed 18 of those 20 quizzes, I got an A in the course. There was no attendance requirement, no exams, no projects, no none of that. So actually the first day of that class was my last day of that class and I just kind of cruised that whole semester. I definitely didn't learn anything, but thank God I'm a software engineer now, not like a mathematician. My fourth class was linear algebra. Now this was probably like my most tame class in that I had some pretty hard classes and pretty easy classes this semester. This was probably like average and you learn a lot of important things like matrices and actually a lot of this stuff comes up later on in machine learning so make sure to pay attention in this class. And now this class was actually not too hard for me because I took an intro to linear algebra class at a community college over a summer so I kind of knew about 50% going in. The fifth class that I took was called sensations and perceptions. Now this class was actually pretty interesting because it was an upper level psychology class and it taught kind of the relationships of computers as well as the human brain. It was part of the artificial intelligence concentration as part of my computer science degree so it showed you a lot of like how people think and how neural networks in machine learning are trained off of that so it was really really interesting. And overall this semester I got four A's and one B in discrete mathematics which is not bad for a first semester of college. My next semester was spring 2020 and for some reason I decided to take six classes as well as do research because I'm kind of crazy and the first class that I took was data structures and algorithms. Now this class was actually pretty hard for me because on the exam a lot of the questions were like edge cases for big O complexity and my brain just didn't think like that. I became less of a mathematical person and more of a coding person and so the assignments were pretty easy for me but the exams were really hard for me and that's what ended up weighing my grade down. But later on in the semester when classes went online when exams went online my grades definitely improved. The next class that I got is computer organization and architecture and now some people like to think of this as a weed out class it definitely is more difficult in a different way than most other classes because you learn a lot of hardware things assembly c and no one loves that stuff you see a lot of people who chose computer science over computer engineering thought that they could escape a lot of this stuff but it's coming back to haunt them and thankfully i got an a in this class because i kind of understood how to think this way but most people tend to struggle from this or tend to switch majors after taking this class the third class that i took was called objects in design now this is actually a very very important class in order to become a software engineer because you learn a lot of things about design principles how to actually create diagrams and just how to run a software engineering team and so the stuff that you learn in this class actually apply a lot on the job also part of this class we recreated space traders which made for an excellent project to put on your resume the fourth class that i took was called health now there's no computer science in this is just like nutrition the body everything that makes a human being well a human being and it was a pretty easy a the fifth class that i took was this one credit freshman computer science seminar class. It's basically this class that every single freshman computer science major has to take at Georgia Tech. You learn all the basics of what Georgia Tech has to offer, how to make a good resume, you know, all the basics. The sixth class that I took was called Applied Combinatorics. And now if you thought discrete math was hard, this is like a older evil sister version of this class. I hated this class because once again, you do a lot of useless math as part of this class. Like for example, how many permutations, how many combinations in the word Mississippi? Like when are you ever going to need that later 
on in your life. Like as a full-time software engineer for over a year now, I have never been once asked a question even remotely close to that. I also got to be in this class, so math was not my forte. And lastly, I did three credits worth of research, and the research project that I did was to create a simulation of a third world country in which a disaster struck. Ultimately, you need to decide how to best allocate resources using genetic algorithms in order to minimize lives lost. This was also a great opportunity for me because my research professor ended up writing my letter of recommendation for my master's. And overall this semester, I got six A's and one B in combinatorics. My next semester was fall of 2020. I took five classes and I was a TA for another class. The first class that I took was called Systems and Networks. This was kind of a build off of that computer architecture class that I took last semester. And then it added on a couple of deeper stuff that happened inside the operations of a computer like IO operations. And then it talks about networks and how like the internet works. And that's actually a really, really important interview question for software engineers. Like what happens when you hit google.com in the browser? So make sure you pay attention in this class. The next class that I took was called machine learning. Now this class was actually much, much harder than I was anticipating and so much more math based than I was hoping. You see a lot of the stuff that happens in linear algebra comes back to bite you and you have to write these like long pages of how you derive your math problems. Like I remember one of my assignments was like six pages, but it ended up becoming 20 pages by the time I submitted it just because of how much work I had to show. Although it's definitely an interesting class if you enjoyed the theory behind machine learning. My third class was called artificial intelligence. And I don't know why people think this, but machine learning and artificial intelligence are not the same thing. You see machine learning, very theoretical, very math based, artificial intelligence, just very coding based and very practical application based. So I enjoyed this class a whole lot more. And yes, there were definitely intersections between machine learning and artificial intelligence. So what I learned in one class definitely did apply in the other. The fourth class that I had was called computer ethics. And I absolutely hated this class because this class was more of a philosophy and like English class rather than a computer science class. Although they tried to frame it as, oh, you're learning about the ethics behind AI or the ethics behind software or like who's responsible if the software like breaks and people's lives are hurt. But really it was like analyzing the world in the lens of all these like ancient philosophers. Like who cares what they say? I mean, I personally don't. I just like writing code. But thankfully I was able to get an A in this class, a large part because it was online. The fifth class that I took was called junior design. And this is like the capstone project for every single computer science major. And this class was in two parts. The first part was design and documentation. The second part is actually implementing. And so for the first part, it was a lot of like diagramming, a lot of writing things out. And I really don't want to talk about the specific project we did because it was kind of weird. Lastly, like I said, I was a teaching assistant. I TA'd for the class objects and design that I took the previous semester and I really enjoyed it. All I had to do was like attend office hours, help students out, grade assignments. And also a lot of my friends were taking the class that semester. So it was a pretty fun dynamic being the teacher for them for once. Overall this semester, I got a perfect 4.0 GPA, A's in every single one of my courses. It's also important to note that I took machine learning at the grad level so that it would apply to my bachelor's as well as master's degree. My fourth and final semester of undergrad, I took six classes, plus I was a TA for one class. The first class that I had was called Automata Complexity. Now I absolutely hated this class. This was an extremely difficult class because you learn about all these like random diagrams, how to put like math in terms of like letters and how to convert games into being Turing complete. A lot of like intelligent stuff that they were just trying to like throw in like easy terms. It was really, really difficult and just kind of like mind boggling just the way they were trying to explain things. So if you're in this class, good luck to you. The second class that I had was called Game AI. Now this class was probably the most interesting class that I took at Georgia Tech. A lot of the projects as well as the exams were very collaboration based. And the premise behind the class was to develop these like bots or like enemies within the game so they would be able to defeat the main character and have the main character learn and be able to improve on that and use artificial intelligence to help you out there. I also took this at the grad level so it would double count for my masters. The third class that I had was called Computer Simulations. Now this class was interesting but pretty difficult because you had some math components to it but also as part of the course projects me and my teammates we developed this simulation of like the stock market kind of based off of the AMC short squeeze that existed in January 2021 and kind of how to deal with this environment when you had hedge funds, novice investors, experienced investors and what would just happen to the general stock market. Also who would make the most money. The fourth class that I had was called health informatics. Now I don't think I worked harder for a class ever before till I took this class. This class was insanely difficult and insanely long in terms of the assignments. We had so much like English paper writing as well as coding to do. Like every time we had to code a project we had to write an essay about it. And not only that I had no JavaScript experience before I took this class and so I had to learn everything on my own. I also had no friends that I was taking this class with because I was taking this exclusively for my masters and like none of my friends at the time were doing their masters. And I really suffered through this class especially because the professor wouldn't enter in the grades till like way 
way after. So I actually had no idea how I was doing in this class. I was just like trying my best, putting things out, and then eventually they were graded at the end, and thankfully I was able to get an A. The fifth class that I had was called Intro to Podcasting. Now, this was actually a mini semester class, meaning that the class only lasted for about a month and a half, and all we had to do was record our voices in a couple of different formats, edit it, add music to it, change it up a little bit, and then submit it. And that was about it. And I had been doing YouTube for a couple months by then, so it was especially easy for me. The sixth class that I took was Junior Design Part 2, which was actually like the development in terms of this like mobile application for my project. And once again, I'm not going to talk about the details of the project because it was a really weird project. Although I'll give you a hint, it was something health related. And lastly, once again, I was a teaching assistant for objects and design, and it was a pretty easy job. Well, that's about all I have in this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to hit the like button and make sure to hit the subscribe button. And also, if you're interested in more computer science related topics, you might be interested in this video right here.